Hey guys, Mr. Decker here. This is Unit 3, Lesson 20 on Velocity. So continuing to learn about ways we can get our sprites to move. We're getting into a little bit more complex movement now. So <clears throat> our computer science standards for this lesson, there are a lot of them and, you know, there they are. Okay, so the essential question for this lesson, how can programming languages hide complicated patterns so that it's easier to program? Well, we're going to get into that. And don't forget to come back here and answer that question in the uh, text entry submission box. Remember that it needs to be two to three sentences. Here are the directions on getting that accomplished. Now, let's jump over to code.org. You know the rest of all that text. You can go to it, reference it, read it. Your video will be over there, the one that I'm making right now. So our new code for this lesson, sprite.rotation speed. We've already seen sprite.rotation, but now we're seeing sprite.rotation speed. So now we can look at uh, increasing or decreasing the rate at which the sprite rotates. And we also have sprite.velocityx. Remember that x is left and right on our directional plane or in our display area. <clears throat> and y is up and down on the directional plane. All right, let's continue. We're on bubble two here, velocity x. One way to move sprites in game lab is with the counter pattern, as we have learned in previous lessons. For example, sprite.1x gets sprite dot one sprite sorry sprite one dot x gets sprite one dot x plus one moves a sprite by one pixel each frame of the draw loop. Remember that the draw loop, this guy, is read by the computer at a rate of 30 times per second. So it's going to move 30 pixels per second if you tell it to move by one pixel, right? That you're choosing its speed there. So if you tell it to move by one pixel every time it's read, then you're telling it to move 30 pixels a second because this is read by the computer 30 times per second. This pattern is so common that sprites have a velocity x property that does this for you. Do this. Drag a velocity x block directly below where your sprite is created. All right. Whoop, I made that too small. There we go. Now we can see the directions up here and see a little bit more where we're coding. So here's the velocity x block. Uh, drag it uh, put it directly below where your sprite is created. So outside the draw loop, I, as I understand it there. We need to match that label so the computer knows what we're influencing. And so fish.velocityx gets, write the name of your sprite in the block. It's the fish, right? Assign the velocity x property a value of one. All right. Run the code. What happens? Well, the fish is moving across the screen. Hmm. Rerun the code, giving the velocity x property a different value. So let's give it a value of three. Reset run. Now the fish is going a little faster. Let's give it a velocity of 10 and see how fast it gets. Okay. A lot faster. So... What's changing is that as I increase the velocity or decrease the velocity, it changes the fish's speed. Hmm. Let's see what happens if I give this a negative five. Oh, it goes the other direction. So with that, then let's change where it begins. So this is deciding where the fish starts on the screen at 50x. Uh, 150y is where it's located up and down. X is deciding where it starts here. So I'm going to start it at 375. So it starts over here. And if I have this negative value in velocity x, it should go backwards. And it does. Cool. All right. 
So I'm going to change all these numbers back. That was originally a 50 run. Now he's moving back that way. Cool. Well, we learned some cool stuff. All right, finish. Continue. Level three. It's a video bubble. I'm originally from South Carolina, and now I'm all the way over in California in Silicon Valley. And here, software is all about optimism. It's not just a means to an end. It's this thing that gives us hope to solve every problem that the world potentially has. Moving your sprites around the screen means using a very familiar pattern, the counter pattern. This pattern lets you add to the position or rotation of your sprite on each tick of the draw loop. So it looks like it's moving or rotating at different speeds. Here's an example we've seen before. Using the counter pattern with the sprites X property, we can control the sprites velocity, how fast it's moving in a particular direction. If we add a larger amount to the X position, the sprite looks like it's moving faster. Adding a smaller amount makes the sprite look like it's moving more slowly. You've been using the counter pattern to control a sprite's velocity a lot. In programming, when the same pattern happens many times, you can often hide those details inside another block. In our example, that block is velocity x. The velocity x property hides the details of the counter pattern that changes the sprite's x position. Whatever number you assign to this property will automatically be added to your sprite's x position on the next tick of the draw loop. This program creates a sprite, gives it an animation, and then draws it on the screen. Now let's give that sprite a velocity by setting its velocity x property to 1, just once, at the beginning of the program. When we rerun the program, we see that the sprite's position is updated. Under the hood, the velocity x property and the counter pattern are used to update the sprite's position, moving it across the screen. The other new properties that work in a similar way are velocity y, which controls velocity in the vertical direction, and rotation speed, which controls how fast the sprite rotates. The under the hood behaviors of velocity x, velocity y, and rotation speed are all things you've tackled in previous lessons. Now, we have to let those blocks handle the details for us and explore new ways to move the sprites on the screen. All right, so I hope you were paying attention to that because that answered the essential question, didn't it? All right, so if you forget or you need to reference again, you can go back to bubble three, watch the video again. He answers this question, how can programming languages hide complicated patterns so that it's easier to program? He answered that question. If you are still like, he did? Then watch that video again. Let's go to bubble four. Moving down, here is a feather sprite that should be floating down the screen. Let's run it and see. Okay, so there's the feather. He's just stuck. Gravity isn't working. The feather is just floating. If velocity x makes a sprite move to the right, can you find the block that will make the feather move down? All right. So that should be velocity x. Let's Pop that up there. We need to match the label to feather so that the computer knows we're messing with the velocity of the feather. If you left that as sprite, watch. If I leave this as sprite as it was originally and even give it a value, the computer's like, oh no, man. I don't know what you're talking about, man. All right, so reset, feather, two, run, dropping, right? Um, find the block that will make the feather sprite go down the stream and use it outside the draw loop. Okay, so that's what we did. Uh, let's continue. So run. All I did was feather velocity y gets two. Reset. Run. Feather drops. All right. Bubble five. Rotation speed. You can use rotation speed to make your sprites spin. If you want your sun to rotate by two degrees each time it's drawn, you can use sun.rotationspeed gets two before the draw loop. 
after you create your sprite. Okay, so run. There's my sun just sitting still. So let's use sprite.rotation speed. Sun, we want two degrees. So sun.rotation speed gets two. Reset run. Now my sun is spinning. And that's a lot easier than having to build out that. Okay, sprite.rotation gets going into the math drawer, right? finding which operator to use. So this makes it a lot easier to build out your code. Okay, uh, yeah, make the sun rotate by three degrees each time using the rotation speed block. So three degrees each time, reset, run, that makes it a little faster. So if, you know, and if I want it to go the opposite direction, I can do that too. So, just remember your positives and negatives. You can make things go faster by increasing the value. Right. So that sun was a little bit out of control. It wanted three, so let's do three. All right, finish. Bubble six. Controlling speed. You used rotation speed outside the draw loop to make your sprite rotate when your program started. You can also use rotation speed inside the draw loop to change the speed of the sprite during the game. For example, a sprite can start rotating when the user presses the space bar, and it will keep rotating until it's told to stop. Do this. Look at the if statement inside the draw loop that checks whether the spacebar has been pressed. You can see that on line eight down here. If key went down space, use the rotation speed block to make the color wheel start spinning when the user presses the spacebar. So sprite.rotation speed, we need to match up here wheel. And it's gonna come up at the center of our display area at 200, 200, and we'll give it a speed of five, let's say. So run, nothing's happening, right? Because I'm not making this true. I'm not holding down or touching the space bar. Now I am, right? Now it's just totally running. Um, so use the rotation speed block to make the color wheel start spinning when the user presses the space bar. Let's do an else and see if we can make it stop if the space bar is not pressed down. Let's just do an experiment. Wheel zero. Reset run. Space bar. That doesn't work. Hmm. Let's see. World key went down. Let's try key down. Yeah, that works. See, now I'm holding down my space bar. I let go of it and it stops. Whereas before, if it was key went down, space, whoop, run it again. If I just tap it with that else, right? It just continues, and no matter what I do, if I add that else and change this to key down. So there's ways you can change how this is going to work. And depending on how you want your game to work, you can set it up different ways so that your game functions the way you want it to function. And some of that is just practice, some of it's trial and error, uh, just figuring out what works, what doesn't work. Let's finish and continue. We're on bubble seven. Changing velocity with position. One advantage to using the velocity blocks inside the conditionals, if blocks, is that your sprite keeps moving even after the condition stops being true. For example, you only had to press a key once to start the color wheel spinning, and it kept spinning forever. 
The code below uses if statements to make a fish sprite move in different directions. Okay, let's go to the do this. Oh, we have to, it's a prediction bubble. Okay, do this. Look at the if statements that check the sprite's position and set its velocity. So here's our if, our if statements. We have two of them, one on line eight and one on line 12. Um, our fish, let's see, create sprite 200, 200. So it's gonna show up here in the very middle. Fish.setAnimation fish R. Is there a fish L? There is a fish L. Okay, so I imagine the fish is going to go is going to have an animation that makes it uh, look to the right and also an animation that makes it look to the left when these are actuated. Uh, so let's see. Look at the if statements to check the sprite's position and its velocity. The velocity x is a positive 2, so immediately it's going to go right. So if fish.x is less than 0, then fish uh, is set animation to fish r. So he'll face the right as long as his x value is less than zero. Hmm. But if his x value is less than zero, then he's off the screen over here. Let's see. Fish dot velocity x equals two. So I imagine maybe he's going to be going back and forth. If fish.x is greater than 400, then fish set animation is fish L, and fish.velocityx equals or gets minus 2. So I think our fish is going to be going back and forth, maybe. And I think he's going to go off the screen, then come back, off the screen, then come back, off the screen, then come back. So let's see. I think the fish is going to start out going right and facing right. And then once it's x value is greater than 400, it will turn around to face left and start moving left. Once it is, what's its x value is uh, less than zero, it will turn back around and face right and move right. It will repeat this pattern over and over again. Let's test it. So it did go right first. Hey, it turns around. Let's see if it does it again when, once its x value is less than zero. Hey, it's doing it, and, it'll, and it should run like that literally forever. If I just let this run, it would do it until the end of time or until the computer itself just decided to uh, foul out, right? Or the power goes out because of a storm or what have you. This fish is going to swim back and forth forever. Somebody, please give it a break. Give it a rest. Drop some food in this bowl. Man, this fish is going to get tired and hungry. All right. Continue, bubble eight. Back and forth. This ball bounces when it hits the bottom of the screen. Let's run it. Bounce, okay. And then it goes up forever, apparently. Can you make it bounce back when it hits the top of the screen? Do this, run the code to see how it works. All right. And then look at how the conditionals and velocity are used to make the ball bounce at the bottom of the screen. So we see that down here. If ball.y is greater than 380, and y numbers increase as you go down, decrease as you go up. So if ball.y is greater than 380, then ball's velocity y 
get minus five, which is what's going to make it go back up. Its velocity is set at the beginning up here at five, and that's what is making it go down. Then once it gets down here, it goes up because of this if statement. So if I go into the, my control drawer, grab another if statement, go into my math drawer and grab a less than sprite drawer, all dot y, matching that variable label, and let's say 20, uh, 20y for up at the top up here. Once it gets to 20y, I want its velocity to be 5 again. So let's see if it bounces back and forth like the fish did on the last one, except we're moving on Y. Yep, it's doing it. I had a feeling that would work. Cool. Hmm. All right, that works. So what I did to get that down there is I just lassoed this, control C and control V, and make sure you have the cursor in the right spot. Finish. Continue. Bubble nine. All right, we've got some practice here. Uh, velocity practice. Practice using the velocity blocks with these activities. Choose from the following activities. We're going to do both of them. Controlling speed. Make the robot fly once the space bar has been pressed at least once. Okay. For this animation, let's run it first. All right, so he's just chilling down here. When I hit space bar, nothing happens. For this animation, you'll help the flybot to take off. It should start moving up when the space bar is pressed, and it should continue moving up even after the space bar is released. Okay, so we'll probably use key went down instead of key down. Do this. Use an if statement inside the draw loop to check when the sp space bar is pressed. All right, so let's go grab an if statement. And we're checking to see when the space bar is pressed. So world drawer. Key went down, whoop, yep. And I'm gonna choose space from the dropdown. And use the velocity Y block, that's in the sprite drawer. Flybot, using cam, whoop, it's typing into outer space apparently. Flybot, using camel case. And move the sprite up when the user presses the space bar. So we'll need to subtract from Y Let's see, run, he does nothing, I hit the space bar, he starts flying up. Now, if I were to use, uh, going back to what we talked about earlier, if I were to use key down here, space, reset, run, then, oh, well, it works either way. So key down or key went down will make the robot fly up the screen just by hitting it once and letting go. Cool. All right. Finish. Continue. B, dip the paintbrush. Dip the paintbrush in the paint. Use a conditional to send the paintbrush down if the down arrow is pressed. Use a different conditional to send the paintbrush up if it reaches the palette. Hint, you will need to check its Y property. Right. Okay, so let's turn on the grid for this one. So run, it's just sitting up there. It's got a red tip, so I'm assuming we want to dip it in the red paint. So we don't have any velocity set up here. So let's set a velocity. Uh, use a conditional to send the paintbrush down if the arrow is pressed. Okay, so control drawer, if statement. I'm going to plop him right there. And then we're going to go to the world drawer. Key went down, down. And down arrow is pressed. Use a different conditional to make it go back up. OK. If key went down, then the sprite's velocity, y, brush velocity, y, equals, let's say, three, and then 
we're going to need another if statement, control if uh, math drawer greater than, because we're checking to see if its y value is greater than, let's say, 350. Well, we want this to touch in the middle of it. So we'll, we, we're going to have to play with those values. Sprite dot y brush dot y is greater than let's use that 350 and see what happens here we want the tip of the brush to touch the red and then go back up uh, then the velocity y is going to then change to negative 3 so that it goes back up at the same speed reset run and I need to hit the down arrow. So it goes down, it goes down too far. So we need to change 350. Let's see if 340 works. Run. Down. Too far again. So you just play with these numbers, see what happens. 325. Let's try 325 down arrow to make it run. Still too far, but it was very close. So let's try 315. Perfect. 315 works, and now it goes <laughs> off the screen. Uh, but that's what it wanted us to do. Use a conditional, send the push down, as press. Use a different conditional, send it back up. And in the... Yep, it does the same thing over there in the example video. All right, finish, continue. So now we're finished with our practices. We're on bubble 10. Swimming right and left. The code below should make the fish start moving right once you press the right arrow. So run. He's not going anywhere. Oh, because it's not set up yet, of course. And then it should continually swim back and forth. You should use conditional statements and the dot velocity block to make the fish swim. Look at the three if statements inside the draw loop. Use a sprite.velocity x block inside each if statement to make the three following movements. Okay. All right. So we've got three blocks. So let's... Do these three steps. If the user presses the right arrow key, move the fish to the right. So velocity x inside this if statement on line 8. And use a fish matching the, the variable label that was established up there. We'll give him a speed of 5. And if his x value is greater than 400... Okay, so if the fish gets to the right-hand side of the screen, move the fish to the left. So, um, okay. So we're, I was worried because we don't have the sprite.x, but it's okay. We don't need it. Uh, velocity x. If it gets above 400 over here, then we want him to turn around and go that way. So I'm going to also do a set animation here to make him be fish L. And I want that to be minus five. So let's see if that's working. Right key. Oh, whoops. Fish. I got to change that label. And moving him to the right. He should turn around. Good. It'll go left forever now. So we need to fix this one. If fish's x value is less than zero, if fish gets to the left hand side of the screen, move the fish to the right. So this time, uh, velocity x, fix the label, it's going to be a positive five, and we want to change the animation back to fish r so that he's facing right then. So run, right arrow key to actuate it. And he should go forever. Awesome. Perfecto. Next bubble, please. 
All right, so we just got one challenge here. Changing course. Can you change velocities four separate times? Let's try it out. Changing course, bubble 11. All right, study the animation to the right. Notice that the purple alien sprite changes between X and, or X and Y velocities when it's near each corner of the screen, then stops when it reaches the final flag. Do this. Run the program, and to underst <clears throat> understand how it works so far, Add velocity x and velocity y blocks to each conditional to make the alien complete the full circuit. All right. Whoa, we got a lot of setting up uh, animation. So we've got flags, we've got aliens and space. All right. So down here, a bunch of flags. So if I run it, He's just going to go up from there forever. And once I get to each of these flags, I want him to change his velocity or change direction. Okay, so he starts out going up. So alien y less than 50. I want him to turn or start going right when he gets up here. And... Velocity x. Be careful of sprites moving diagonally. It might mean that both x and y. Velocity. Okay, so let we'll we'll have to kind of work with this and figure some things out. Trial and error here. So alien, let's say three. Keep him moving at the same speed. So reset, run. Now he's going at a diagonal. So we need to change his y velocity to zero. Run. There we go. Now he's going to go that way forever. So in this one, once his x value is greater than 350 and he makes it to this flag, then we want to set his x velocity to zero. And his y velocity go down, so changing that to three. Let's test it. Whoop. All right, so far so good. Once he gets to this flag, we want to send him that way. So this time, once alien.y is greater than 350, meaning he's at this flag down here, then we're going to set his velocity x to minus 3 to make him go left towards that flag that's going to be over there. And we want his velocity y to be 0 so that he stops going down. Let's test that. Cool. And he's going to continue that way forever because we have to fix this if statement. So velocity x and velocity y, we know we need to do both. So alien, alien, matching those labels. And this time his velocity x will be 0 because we want him to stop moving left. And we want him to start moving up. So we're going to subtract from y to make him go up. Let's run it and see if he does the full circuit. And now, with this set up this way, he should do this circuit forever. Nope. Okay. Well, how do they do it here? They want him to stop on that one? Oh, okay, I see. Change of course, then stops when it reaches the final flag. When it reaches, I guess that's the final flag. So this will be zero as well. Now I'll reset run. He's booking it. Now as he stops on the final flag, we did it. Yes, sweet. All right. Great success. We figured it out by reading the directions. <laughs> okay.
All right. We finished. That's all of the velocity lesson. Next, uh, we will be working on collision detection. Really gamifying it. All right. You can do the free play if you want to. I'm not going to require it. Um, so just one challenge level for bubble 11. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know I did. It's simplifying the code for us, making things a little less complicated going forward. I like it.